Oh boy! All right. All right. It's time for window abusing here. I, Zion really's got. A, he's got a lot of work ahead of him. I, I don't know if I'm. I'm happy that I got my predictions of the hero right. I'm not too happy about this rap. It's rough. It, it really <laughs> is rough. Like, RSG MY can get picked off so easily. They don't have the, the flexibility that Anarchy AH actually has. So the timing and execution is going to be at an all-time high for their comp. Oh, boy. They are definitely going to go all in with this play here. But Onyx PH, they pretty much set up the draft, playing something a little more standard. But RGMY looking to wow us with their potential last performance here. But can they drag this out into this game number three? Because as of now, I'm excited to see whether or not RGMY bounces back. Because now they are at a stage where if they lose this match, they lose their chances to make it off to the next stage. While Onyx PH is looking to still qualify. Mm -hmm. And Onyx PH has been looking very, very good, mm -hmm. adjusting accordingly, not giving too much space to RGMY, and hopefully they can repeat this again to get this clean 2-0. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be game two for RSGMY going up against Onyx PH. And Onyx PH currently on the blue side and RSGMY on the red side. Yep, Zayed. Oh, they're starting on opposite sides of the map this time. Purple buff starts for Zayed and purple buff start for the Okai. So Okai wants to end up uh, end up by the Litho Wanderer, but Zayed doesn't want that at all. He's just going to walk in to wait. On the cage, uh, making a full move here. Look at Arla as well as Valentina. Huh, this is interesting, but at the same time, I'm surprised that Kegedo's got a very early level advantage as a Roman compared to Nate. This is something I did not expect as well, because RG and why one expecting that they back off, they will give a little bit more control. But yeah, as of now, mid control is gonna be the way to go for on a PH. We don't see a lot of a uh, you know emphasis on those goal laners yet, but they are sending a Nate down bar for RG. Why? Well, on a PH is just hovering around. Uh, for Onyx PH, they want to develop the lead for Sensui and then start... Because he's going to path down to the full lane anyways, right? So there's nothing really much for Beatrix to really do. Plus, you're up against a bro Brody, which is a very volatile lane. Yeah, agreed. But at the same time, Master Assassin up on Zayat means that uh, anyone who's going to be all by themselves is going to get completely one shot by Zayat. So in this case, Onyx PH, they're respecting this, but they have to be aware that Zayat is going to be looking to dictate the tempo for the game, while Onyx PH... All they gotta do is just play safe, play it slow, wait for the Hakai's uh, heavy spin up online, and this is where total contest is gonna be a little bit more easier, I guess. Yeah, no, this is where it gets really dangerous, right? Because mm -hmm. again, both supports are in the mid lane trying to rush their level 4 by absorbing full EXP, and even if Zayat is going to start off oh. this... Oh boy, Repo, he's no, gonna flicker away, he's, he's gonna find blue, S split split goes in, he is gonna back off, but nay, for the setup, he does connect, connects onwards one, here comes the better S right as well, they pull him back, and that's gonna be third taken now, first blood in the hands of RSGMY, that's gonna be total secured as well, meanwhile, bottom lane, uh, seems like they do pick off little deals for Onyx PH as a uh, consolation prize. Yep, nicely done by RSG MY, but I love the resource management coming in from Onyx PH, right? They know they don't necessarily have to invest all of their members by this uh, by this neutral objective, and because of that, they were able to secure a kill onto Bully Elves, which means now the volatility of this lane has been broken. Nets has a very good opportunity to start just dominating from here on out. Yep, it's interesting, considering that Shenzui actually opted to actually pick a fight against Repo rather than heavy spin into a turtle fight. But uh, King Witcher is an army, okay, focus oh. down as well, but he actually survived now. Counterplay with the Federal Ezra as well. Chief flickers forward, tries to pick him off, but instead has no way out. So that's going to be RSGMY with a very, very good counterplay coming in, and it's not going to be over as well. Shenzui forced the heavy spin relatively early. Meanwhile, RGMY is going to get away with all these pickoffs. Notice bottom side, we see the rotations coming up really soon here. Kaja still... Kekadu technically, he still has his ult. He's just waiting for an opportunity to find the right target. Because let's keep in mind the damage dealers, right? Ideally, he needs net specifically because he's the only one who can burst people down compared to everybody else on his team. Agreed. And this is a problem uh, coming from Onyx PH, right? They don't have this kind of early engagements. They have a lot of sustainabilities. But when it comes to pickoff potential, like you said as well, Nets is all the only guy that has this kind of kill threat potential in early stage of the game unless RGMY decides to overextend their stay which you as we can see is an army was somehow able to actually get out in the prior engage with yep. oh they're gonna okay. Oh, okay no 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 they don't have to reveal everybody here as long as Zai doesn't show they, they up on did. the map I'm not sure whether that last minion spotted him out but on a PH right if they recognize this and if they did spot him out they would not be sitting around this turtle they would be sending their mid lane members down to the bot side I guess but as of now bottom turtle is gonna be out open up as well. Repo does count on this rotation coming from Onyx PH. They do know that they are all here to contest this. Meanwhile, Zayat is still not in a position to fight this yet. He is going to try and farm his way through while RGMY is still very busy trying to pick up on the bottom fight. And look at this, they're actually committing on the mini map onto his nets and they don't even get any of those walls. So that's going to be an easy turtle for Onyx PH. This. Good choice coming in from RSGMY. This neutral objective doesn't really benefit them because their composition just requires, most of their heroes require one item and they already are relevant in these fights. Molios is now unlocked from that bottom lane. 
Bimbo now needs to clear that top side and go for the lane swap early rather than late. Oh, nay. Nee. Like factory make a play. Seems like it's not going to connect. So that's going to be the disengage coming in from RSGMY. Meanwhile, this is going to be a KK dot. Does have the flicker. Is he going to go for the play? But I know. Not, not gonna be happening, but unless I say something as well, there's gonna be a lot of punch coming in from Master Assassin. As soon as he's counter Shen Sui, immediately backs off. Yeah, they need to lane swap now. The timing is perfect. They, he's gonna get oh, pulled back. No. Not the worst in the world. It's fine. He flickers out of there. Wait, gets he the gets... feather air what? strike as well. No way! Zion protects him. Perfect! They lose basically nothing except for a feathered air strike. Beautiful, beautiful stuff coming in from RGMY. Because of this, Onyx PH. They are losing out some more space because as of now, Lulios, he makes it to the top safely. He's going to get a free wave on potentially a tier 1 as well. Because the rest of Onyx PH, they're not going to actually rotate in time. But as of now, Feather S right on top of it all, trying to scare off there to ensure this tier 1 fall in the hands of RGMY. Good insurance gets the River Crab as well. Now RGMY, they are uh, the ones controlling the tempo. They are ahead of Onyx PH. But it doesn't mean that Onyx PH can't bounce back here, right? The next point of contention is going to be by this turtle side. They don't necessarily have to commit members to actually clean up up uh, the bottom tier one because it's still very dangerous for Nets to show up in these fights. Uh, a lot of hybrid item positions here, but Odin thought of now. Divine Judgment comes in. Repo! But before the split, the final slash pulls it out of position, but he is going to be able to get out. The rest of RGM1, they are going to pick him apart, apart as well. Defender Estra on top of it all to zone them back. So that's going to be on a PH losing Dur just like that. Uh, a little unfortunate because Dur wanted to go for even more. He still had that flicker, but unfortunately, just not the case here. Ripple luckily managing to flicker out just in that time. Now, Nets is going to be able to secure this bottom tier one. However, because RSG has the tempo, you can see that all their members, we don't even need this throw. Let's just go straight for the structure. Yeah, they should, because top side tier twos are exposed. Leo's already shaping away. There is going to be there. Nothing can actually do too much about this, Brody. So that's going to be uh, a lot of map control in favor of RSG. My especially top lane, this turtle was pretty much guaranteed. And RSG, they're not even going to go for it here. They are going to try and force a play. Kick it up. Gets caught out on Nate from the side. Hydro Drake comes in. Veteran Astra does clip, chip him at the side. Unfortunately, no follow up coming from RSG. RGMY, the Divine Judgment, will punish him instead, and that's gonna be RGMY losing Nate, not even taking a tier 1 down mid here, almost takes it down. Hey, yo, where was the comms there? Where, why is Izanami still looking for the frontline members when they've already found that pick on the side? So, uh, whatever, that just happened. Now, Onyx PH, they've got all five of their members, and it's 4v4 by Turtle Side. Oh! No, Repo, he's gonna get completely huh? pinned now, but the split comes in. No, he's not gonna be able to do it. Lulios tries to go in for the flank. He is in a little bit of awkward position, but he does get out to safety. Toto will be secured at the expense of losing Rico. What just happened there? Lolio's flickering forward to try to close the distance onto Nets. Nets just walking back into the tri brush, thinking, what in the world is going on? Didn't even have to blow his flicker as well. So now, RSG getting a little sloppy on the on the execution here, but at the end of the day, they are the ones that are ahead. 1.7k gold lead with finally a turtle falling into the hands of Onyx PH. Yeah, very, very interesting as well, considering that the, they are playing a little bit of a ambush here. They are setting things up. Repo gonna be face checking here. Does got all the rotation of Monic EH. The rest of the team are here. But Repo trying to bait out rotations here, but now she's away. They try to force the heavy spin. Nope. Does not even commit to it as well, but they do chuck him out down low. Repo, Repo. Finally pops the split, split flickers away, but Zion picks off the back lines. Nets gets killed off and RSGMY. They get a very, very nice pick from the sides as well. Zion now looking for more. Is he gonna get more? No. Seems like they are gonna try to zone them out, but Onyx EH has to disengage from this. Yep, I mean, Zion is two levels ahead uh, of the Akai right now since Sui are at level 11. And again, some good decisions being made for the side of RSG and Y. They recognize that they don't need the turtle, so this allowed Zion a lot more free time to actually clear out his own jungle and then start thinking about how to punch their opponents. Yeah, this is something that I think it is gonna be very, very difficult to actually play around, considering that Onyx PH, their own main damage dealer, is pretty much. Uh, coming from Nets, and Chovy hasn't been in a position where he can actually threaten anyone from RGMY, if you think about it. They're just so beefy, they're just so tanky, and it's extremely hard to actually peel them apart, and they don't really have a play where they can actually go in for the backline, like how they played in game one. Right now. Uh, right now, the only person who can do something like that is Durr. Durr. He's gonna have to flicker final slash to cancel, uh, to try and cancel, at the very least, the, the Feather Air Strike, right? right? That's all he can really do realistically. But it's still tough. It's still tough. It is a 4.1k lead. Now to 4k lead inside of RSG and Y. They're immediately getting on top of the turtle. Yeah, Brifo already going for the split. Bins. Pulls off Shinzue. He's gonna try and isolate here. Prevent it from the law now. Better effort already comes in. The responding PNG collapse onto his RSG and Y right in the hands of Lulios. And they'll pick him apart. And now Lulios is out of position. He gets kicked out and Jovi at the expense of his own life. But the rest of the PH are slowly getting zoned out by RSG and Y. But they do get to disengage. But at the same time, they've lost Zayat. Yeah, they did lose 
lose Zayed here, but the rest of the members should be able to hold out, right? Sensui and Durr, they're good at peeling, but Nets is extremely immobile and he doesn't have Flicker. And at the end of the day, he's more worried about Izanami having the Feathered Airstrike and as well as the fact that Ripple still has Flicker. Yeah, true, Sensui, he still has the Retreat, like you said as well. Because now Feathered Airstrike comes in, connects oh, a oh. big one on Nets, but Nets! With all coming in, he tries to burst down Ripple, but it is going to be low enough for him to finish him off. That's going to be killing spree up for Nets. And now Zayd finally back in position to try and contest for the Lord once again. It is going to be the dance around again. And Onyx PH is slowly catching up back the lead that they lost. But Nets is going to be in position once again. He does not have his ult yet. For RSGMY, they're all clumped in. Here comes the Divide Judgment coming from him. And they will be bursted down just like that. Fedor comes in. KK Dot needs to back off. Since he secures the turtle. If they are going to commit, no, nope, they do not. They back away here. They trade Kick Dude for Nay this time round. And RCMY, all of the advantages and full monetary advantages they've achieved in the earlier stages of the game, all down the drain as Onik uh, H is able to equalize, which is great for them, right? And they also have the Lord, so technically they are going to be the ones taking the initiative. And more importantly, they finally get ahead in this game. Yeah, this is something that they have been looking for for a long, long time, right? But so far, Nets has been playing really, really well. and. I like how that he's been positioning himself in a situation where he's getting a lot of kills just because of the fact that RGMY is forced to actually commit to him. I think that right now what Nets has over Lolios is just trigger discipline, right? Like Lolios, if he doesn't get that kill, and even though the person is 1% HP, and he could just go for an auto attack, he flickers for it. Yeah, true. Repo now getting chunked up pretty hard. This is out of the way. The Fedestra comes in. He connects on Chovy, and that's going to be huge for RSGMY. The heavy spin is going to disrupt the back line, but they do pick him up bit by bit. And RGMY finally finds uh, that opening that they... Uh, been looking for. Yeah, honestly, that's pretty funny. That <laughs> it was pretty funny that Rippo decided to start latching on uh, to Chovy there. Since Sui's heavy spin technically is damaging Chovy at the same time. <laughs> Small interactions. It's not like it was a big deal, but it's fun to see. Yep. But at the same time here, with these two kills, are they going to be able to transverse into anything? Because now tier two is going to be a, a attack to become an R S G M Y on a P H and not defend this. Better than actually be committed just to secure this here too. Yep. This is how you see down these turrets. It's, it's that's why we see Be in the previous metas of Beatrix and Brody, they basically do the same thing. Crack structures early, farm the entire shield as much as you can. Make sure you have an artillery mage so nobody walks up and you've gotten the perfect recipe for a siege composition. Yep, and on a PH playing very, very safe here, which is interesting if you think about it. Uh, considering that they are playing this discipline, it feels like they're just a game of Izanami. But at the same um, time, I feel like Sai can actually threaten them. Sai definitely can, right? And I think, you know, Audic PH realized that a lot of the gold uh, developed on their side is in invested into Nets. He's five, well, sorry, he's six, one and one currently, right? They need Dur to kind of catch up and get tankier so that he can try to walk up instead of having to commit a flicker to get on top of Izanami. Kekadut, on the other hand, pretty much the exact same problem, right? He is finding these picks, but he's purposely targeting the front line because without the front line, RSG MY will be wide and exposed. Yeah, and in this case, it feels like when it comes to exposing themselves, I feel like RG and Y, they just don't need to do that. Like, if all they gotta do is just play poke and peel, and they're all good. As long as KKD makes a mistake, they can kind of capitalize on, on, on just punishing them. About it. I mean, we'll see, because in macro sense wise, RSG, they hit their next item power spike, this neutral. Oh, look at the fat flank coming out. Did they spot out the flank? No way, no way. I think they do. Oh! The now they're going for the catch. They completely collapse. A big out coming from Nets. Chunks them away. And Nets will burst down the Leos once again. A second out from Nets. And RSGMY, they make the blunder. Quick reactions coming from Onyx DH. And that's going to be a double kill for Nets. And the immediate collapse comes in. Oh my goodness. Looks good for RSGMY. But Onyx PH. Just one step faster. I'm going to make a call here. I don't do this very often, but I would like to see the replay, uh, the replay of Kufra Nay somehow not hitting three people there with his ult. I am not sure what exactly happened. The fact that only one person was stunned for that long is kind of suspicious, but uh, you know, maybe there's something I missed because it was in that zoomed out view. Well, true. They, they did actually back out really quickly as well from Morning PH. They were able to just completely disengage. But yeah, like I said as well, yeah, they just backed like, out. Yeah, like they that. just walked yeah. out of it, right? Like, I'm Weird. pretty sure that AoE should have hit all three people there. True. I, I'm what agreed. happened? I don't know, man. It might be 
an interaction coming from Gufra. No, it can't it. be. It's the, it looks so good, right, from I that angle. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why? Why is it like this? Why does a video game be like this right now? <laughs> well, sometimes such is life, man. Such uh, is life. I, I, honestly, I feel a little cheated. You have to admit that did look rather suspicious. Yeah, I agree. What the heck happened? Man, there's got to be an interaction that I'm missing out here somewhere, right? I don't see any purifies as well. Like, what? True. Was the angle awkward? Was it wrong? Did he not collide with the wall because the wall is kind of shaped funky? Well, we gotta analyze it in slow mo when we actually uh, back out. But for now, the, the fight does continue because Onyx DH is one step closer to actually advancing forward because now with the Lord coming in, the inhibitor will fall and now RSGMY, they lose name from the get go and they might actually lose even more. Onyx DH now just completely dissecting them. Well, Leo's tries his best to go to all of our memories, but the Lord's still chipping away at the crystal. Is down by 70% health, but Onyx DH, they don't wanna continue this fight. They are gonna try and get a little bit more, but it seems like they won't be able to do so. Yep, I mean, they pushed their advantage all the way to getting a 3.8k goal lead. So what a swing in terms of the economy. But keep in mind, he's not be still a huge problem. Chunking out nets for 50% of his HP. Yep, and now the top inhibitor will be exposed as well. Better network has been used to defend the middle lane. And RSGMI, they would rather the play a side to side, but Arnick Beach says, I don't care, I'm gonna go for the crystal. Oh. No minions, it's gonna be risky. Nee, he's gonna try and go for the cash, instantly gets countered off by his wall. Here comes Ultimate from Ness to try and zone them out, but they will gladly sacrifice Durr to back out to safety. I'm surprised that Durr even decided to go back into that fight, right? I know that he had Flicker and he could have tried to outplay it, but at the end of the day, he still needs that final slash to make it all kind of uh, wrapped up nicely. So RSG making this an even game, 12 to 12 right now, and Kekunu finally getting the fleeting time after all this, uh, after everything that has happened. Well, it's been a long day. It has been a long time, but considering the state of the game, this is the perfect time for him to actually go for a fleeting time, just because of how RGMI can't seem to just completely go for the one shot. It is a very, very drawn out fight time and time again, and Onyx PH is just so good at actually prolonging this fight, which is crazy. I would say that Onyx, uh, I would reverse it. I would say that Onyx PH is much better at kind of just slowing down the pace of the game, right? Mm -hmm. I think they have a very good set of tempo, but they have a significant advantage here for this Lord King, right? The side lanes are kind of constantly pushing him yep. to RSG and Y, and based off of game number one, they have strong fundamentals, so they're going to start messing with RSG and Y. They're going to do this really, really slow until the waves start to pile up. Yeah, but speaking of piling up here, Lord being up, being up for Chen's way, he's waiting for the minions to actually shove the bottom lane, and RSG and Y, they can't really do too much unless Onyx PH shows himself which they just did, so they have a rough idea where Onyx PH is, and RG. They can't really do too much about this fight, but Repo, oh, he forced the split, split, and this is actually huge on HPH now, as they can actually commit to what's a, a fight, but they're just not, they don't want, they don't need to date oh, now. No. With the Tyrant's Rage, he does connect Kekunu. on Dirty Thin. And now from the back lines, Kekunu tries to hunt him to Izanami. Izanami gets out, Zai first down, Chobi. And now here comes the Divine Judgment coming from Kekunu. Nee will be first and down, but he does have some immortality. He's gonna get out. Meanwhile, the Lewis, he won't get pinned to the wall. He gets first and down, and that still survives and kills them all. And now he comes down towards a 2v2 side. Still has the damage challenges as well. He's got the damage, he's going for the punch. But look at this, the disengage comes in, but Repo will gladly focus on towards Dirty and now the flicker comes in, they're buying more time, but it will eventually fall. But the minions, the minions! ...to go back, either rip, uh, most likely Rippo in this particular case, because uh, it's building up fast, like it pulled all three of those waves. Like, somebody's gotta be careful of this back door, it's uh, piling up. Yeah, <laughs> it is indeed, but now with the Lord, gonna be exposed to go, Rippo is gonna try and zone them down, but it's gonna be tough because Shen Tsui is in a position, it is gonna be a 50-50 coin thing, unless he has his AB spin, but the minions come in. It. Oh, they do have oh, a little no, bit more, but no. they're not gonna reset this. No, this is gonna be tough. Onyx PH, they've got three members now. Here comes the split space. Zayn, still not in position. They don't have the combos going for the retribution. Early. They have to back up, and Onyx PH looks for the zone, but oh! the rest of RSGMY, they show up right in the nick of time. They the are gonna fall the back door. But the back Kitsui door. tries to steal the Nets. Lord, and he actually Nets. seals it away. And here he comes, Nets. He's looking for the backdoor play. He's got the damage. Repo is here. Can they go in for the stun? Yes, they can. The rest of RSG is finally here. They take him out. They keep things alive. They get four for nothing and now Lolios manning up the fight against her he's got the immortality and Lolios wins this fight they get the wipeout despite losing the Lord oh they still have a minion there Nay can tank it Nay can absolutely tank it and Rippo is able to delay the Lord that's GG as we're gonna be equalizing it here who's coming back though Kekadun is gonna come back for his uh, if he can uh, buy uh, six uh, seconds uh, for Toby uh, Lolios Lolios he's okay. clearing the wave oh, oh my no. god oh no oh no Lolios he yes, died Lolios. This year. he gets pulled back and he's gonna die he don't even get the crystal and Onyx PH they somehow oh. hold on RSG and oh. they thought they got this in the bag but with the Lord still shoved on the top side Repo is just 
struggling to defend against this. Oh my goodness. They, they will clear it. This is going to be a full reset, but Onyx PH fans rejoice! Rejoicing here that oh Jovi boy. was able to pull it back in time, and Kekadu just had just enough damage because the minions were already low. All things lined up perfectly. Oh my goodness. You hate Woo! to see it for RGMY because now it's back to reset form. They've got to do it all over again. And it's going to be tough. Like you said, well, minions going to be chopped in. 88 seconds for the Lord Pit. And Onyx PH now full off as they still have to enhance minion. They're looking for play. Oh Dang. no! He misses the charm. He is going to get pulled back. Is he going to survive? Absolutely not. Now, Heavy is going to be pinning on Zion as well. He commits to this and they lose everything. 3v5 and Onyx PH. They will continue the extension here. They've got those immortalities and RSGMY. They've got to do it without Nay and Zion in this next 40 seconds. Yep, and that's he's just slowly picking away at this mid inhibitor. The final one. Unfortunately for RSGMY, they've got about 33 seconds oh of boy. defense this to is tough. somehow pull it back. This is tough. They're slowly chipping it away. Onyx PH playing very, very safe here. Nets taking advantage of those long range knives. This inhibitor will guarantee fall unless they throw bodies. Divine Judgment comes in. They pull in towards Repo. Immortality comes in, but the final dash forces Lolios. Has to back out. Repo forced to go for a Winter Trumpkin swap. Doesn't even matter. They've got the damage. It is over. It is GG. Well played as Onyx PH clean house and take the series 2 to nothing against RSGMY. A 2 0 victory for Onyx PH. GG, well played. And congratulations as they make it another day here at the SPS. But of course, we have to say goodbye to RSGMY. They put up some good games, some good directions, a lot of potential, and at least they made it a series rather than yesterday where they were having an off day. Yeah, it was a very, very difficult game for RSGMY. But Onyx PH, Woo. salute to them. Prevailed, hold down, 2 to nothing. And so far, guess what? 100% prediction, baby. Hey.